Hi everyone, welcome to today's webinar. TikTok Happy Hour is a monthly live event where we get we where we gather the brains behind our app and share their uh, share their work and life philosophy with audiences. I'm out from the organizational development team based in London at TikTok, and I'll be your host today. I've got three of my amazing colleagues from around the world who share totally different backgrounds um, uh, and will talk to us today about um, their backgrounds, why they joined TikTok, um, their experiences to date. We're going to hear their stories and what attracted them to our organization and also talk about the culture of our organization. Um, so let me introduce uh, Justin, Boone and Debbie. Lovely to have you on board today. Um, would you start off by giving us a quick introduction um, about uh, wh what location you're in, your prior work experience, and um, your current uh, role at TikTok as well? So uh, let's start off with Debbie. Hey, Debbie. Hi, everyone. So I'm Debbie. I'm in the Sydney, Australia office, but I'm actually from California. And my past background is that I used to be in the communications and was traveling the world for the past eight years on cruise ships and teaching abroad. And just got really lucky and landed in TikTok. And I now work in the content partnerships team and more specifically community where we help to amplify uh, creators and help support them. Awesome. Thank you, Debbie. Um, Boone, can we go over to you? Hey, Boone. Hello. Uh, my name is Boone. Uh, I'm situated in Singapore. So over the past 10 years, I've been working on uh, mostly games at the start, and then I transitioned to applications, and then eventually mobile applications. So I'm currently uh, working as a mobile engineer at TikTok Singapore. Amazing. Thank you, Boone. And lastly, Justin. Hey, Alpesh. Hi, everybody. My name is uh, Justin, I'm based in Dubai. I head up the, the legal team for the MeTAC region, so it's the Middle East, Africa, Turkey, and Pakistan. Um, after university, I went to coach youth football for Major League Soccer across America. Then I entered the, the corporate world of law and uh, had various tech, media-centric legal roles in, in London and Dubai, and now I'm here at TikTok. Um, in my current role, I generally focus on regulatory work, litigation, trust and safety, uh, and product work, as well as managing the regional team. Amazing. Thank you. Thanks for the great introduction. So um, when we talk about your kind of previous experience and how you, uh, how, how has that helped you kind of perform your roles, your current roles at TikTok today? And also love to hear why you join TikTok, um, what, why TikTok? you know, from each of you. So can I start off with Boone yourself? So I hear entrepreneur to uh, developer. So, you know, what, what, what's the background? Tell us a little bit, Matt. Sure. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, when I first started out uh, right after school, uh, I tried to make a game uh, myself and try to bring it to market. So uh, I, I managed to finish the product. I got it to launch, but uh, it didn't sell that well. So there was some uh, naive thinking right there. Uh, so I ended up uh, closing the company, but there were many things that I learned from this whole process from uh, starting uh, planning all the way to like uh, delivery of the product itself. Yeah, so this helped me a lot uh, throughout my career, uh, thinking from a business perspective, how, how to make something work for everyone. That includes the developers and your end users. So yeah, um, after I closed the company, I moved on to uh, mobile development. At a point of time, that was a bloom of the iOS and Android devices. I was particularly interested in Android. So I, I worked on Android development and then uh, that kickstarted everything uh, to today, yeah. Awesome, Boone. And what, why TikTok, Boone? Why did you join us? All right. Uh, so uh, for TikTok itself, because um, it's a huge social media app, so uh, due to the international scale, uh, I wanted to work on bigger problems. Uh, so for example, you know, like if you are just working for like uh, my, for example, games, for example, you're just working on just a product for a certain uh, niche or demography. But for TikTok itself, it's a huge app, so it has global impact. So there may be other things that you need to think about. So I, I like to be challenged uh, in, in that direction. So I, I chose TikTok. 
Awesome, thank you, Boon. Um, Debbie, over to you from World Traveller to content. <laughs> yeah, so I guess you can say I went from cruise ship to community. Um, but the thing that the both the industries had in common was obviously all people. So I've always, I was a communication major in uni as well. And so I've always been a talker. <laughs> I've always liked meeting people. I've always liked hearing those stories. Um, and TikTok, I think, is really magical in the sense where you can hear everyone's stories and you can hear their, you can, obviously watch their creative stories and, um, you know, their creative juices and everything flow. Um, so I, the reason why I love TikTok so much is because I started off as, I guess you can say I'm a TikTok fangirl. So, I mean, I downloaded it when probably everybody else was downloading it right before the pandemic hit. And it honestly was the number one thing that really kept, kept me sane last year. Um, it really helped my mental health. I absolutely loved it. I mean, I was full blown into creating on the app and I've met so many other really, really wonderful creators as well. Um, and yeah, I mean, I was doing the dances, I was like finding my niche. And so I was kind of writing at the time as well. Um, but I fell so in love with it that I created like this little vision board, dream board. It's gonna sound hippie, hippie, woo woo. Um, and I put TikTok as my dream company and never really saw anything of it. I was like, I'm just gonna try really hard and then got really lucky and I'm here now. So <laughs> always follow your dreams. <laughs> Amazing, That's such a great story. Thanks, Debbie. And then Justin, football coach to tech lawyer. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, on the face of it, you probably wouldn't think there'd be too many sort of similarities bet uh, between the two. But I suppose when you look at coaching and you know the sort of attributes you have to have to be a good coach in terms of having clear goals, being a good communicator, strong team ethic, a good listener being organized and, and giving confidence to others. I mean, everything I've mentioned can be applied to being a productive lawyer and a good manager. And the legal team uh, is definitely stronger when we work together, when we communicate, and this def definitely enables us to have a very happy and uh, energetic and collaborative department. Awesome. And then Justin, why, why TikTok? Um, I suppose, I mean, I've always been, I've always been a tech lawyer. So um, I've always, I've been a tech lawyer, the different companies I've been to, and I've always tried to move in, in sort of di different sectors. So I was at the Royal Bank of Scotland, so banking, Expedia with travel, noon.com with, with e-commerce and now TikTok. And I mean, that certainly helped develop me as a, as a lawyer, but um, yeah, I've always been a tech lawyer. Uh, and really, where else is there to be right now? This is this is the best company to be a tech lawyer at. Um, the opportunity arose. It was too exciting, and it was too interesting to turn down. Uh, I've been here almost a year, uh, and I've enjoyed every moment of it. Thanks, Justin. Appreciate that. Thank you. Um, when we talk about um, kind of TikTok, um, if, you were, if you were to pick a couple of things about what you all enjoy about working at our organization or working at TikTok, what would those one, two or three things be? Um, Debbie, can I start off with you, please? Yeah, so I have a big one and that's the main reason why I chose TikTok and it's also why it's, it was my dream company in the first place. Um, so we have a few bite styles um, and one of the bite styles is champion diversity and inclusion. And as a Japanese American, I think I felt really, really close to this one just because I knew that um, like in the past, I've worked with companies, I've been very fortunate for those opportunities, but I haven't really found um, I guess opportunities to kind of really leverage, you know, different ways to kind of like enforce inclusion and all that. And so TikTok has diversity, equity, inclusion, and integrity committees. It's a mouthful, DEII for short. Um, and I've joined quite a few of them. Um, my colleague and I, and we started an Asian Australian one just because of all, I'm American as well. So seeing and reading all the news and not being able to be there for my family and loved ones. And you know, just growing up Asian American, I think that was really, really hard for me this year to see, um, and especially last year. And so we've had the opportunity to, you know, like we basically go to HR, and I was like, kind of voicing my passion about this. And we're so lucky to work for a company where they support us and nurture us in that way. So we were able to start that initiative. We're partnering with the global offices, um, especially the LA office as well. Um, there's a mental health initiative which I'm a part of. Women at TikTok. Um, the girl in our office who heads that was the global black dancer of the year, and. So I just feel so passionate about the fact that TikTok really gives 
all of us a voice and we're all able to feel like we all get equal opportunities and um, yeah, we feel inclusive. <laughs> Thanks, Debbie. Appreciate that. And Boone, how about yourself? Um, what about one, one or two things that you enjoy about working at TikTok? Yeah. Uh, so one of uh, one of the things that uh, I like uh, working here is the international scale of TikTok. So uh, when a product is uh, this huge, you tend to have to think about problems in a different way. So for example, like a, a problem that comes from a local product may not have such a big impact. Like maybe you have some bugs and you, you don't have to think about it too much. Maybe it affects like a small, small amount of users. But when it comes to international product, that may not work the same way. So it trains your, your thought process in a different way. So you don't underestimate everything or anything at all. So uh, that, that's one of the, the main things that I, I like working here. Another thing that I like uh, about working at TikTok is the open uh, environment here. So let me elaborate. So. Uh, I have many colleagues here that are uh, quite open and uh, I would say constructive in general. So for, for example, if I have a problem, I could just ask openly. So I can ask everyone like, hey man, uh, what do you think of this? And everyone is happy to chip in and everyone is so so productive. They, they give you a actionable plan to your problems and everyone is so eager to contribute. So uh, in, in this environment, it's a very open and self-learning environment. So it's like a whole buffet of knowledge for me. So that's one of the, uh, one of the things that I enjoy working here. All right. Thank you, B. Appreciate that. And Justin, how about yourself? Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with everything um, Debbie and Boone mentioned. I mean, there are so many good things about working here. The people, I think the people is the most important thing. I mean, the people are just amazing. Uh, the working environment, the support that you receive, uh, and being part of something that's so current and so creative. Um, but if I could probably choose one thing, I would say it's being so immersed in the product that is TikTok. You know, if you discount all the amazing products that are coming out of ByteDance, you just look at TikTok and how it's evolved and continues to develop and grow and, um, you know, how we support and develop our users and our creators with the Creative Fund and the TikTok Creative Marketplace. Just being part of the development of this product and seeing the positive impact it's having is, is a really exciting place to be. Awesome, thank you, Justin. Really, really appreciate that, thank you. Um, so, when we, you know, looking at us on the phone call, we're all, on, we're all on, on this call, so we're all on different locations, we're all from different diverse backgrounds. And I suppose like the organization is so diverse, as Debbie talked about, it's some, one of the things that she really enjoys about working about our company, about the diversity and the inclusion side of things. So when we talk about collaborating with colleagues from a different background, what kind of things do you do? How do you approach it? What's your kind of experiences in the organization? So um, Justin, can I start with you? Is that all right? Sure. Um, I mean, I really like the fact that we have so many employees from such a, a wide variety of backgrounds and experiences from different sectors and just general you know, life experiences. You look at how sort of Boone and, and Debbie both, what they did before they came to, to TikTok and what, you know, what they can add. And I think it helps create such a fun and interesting and, and dynamic environment. I mean, in terms of how, how I collaborate with my colleagues, it's, you know, the key is always to be a very good listener, be patient, welcome everyone's opinion, which is certainly done here, uh, respectful of local time zones, which is always interesting when you have work with a, such a global company, and, uh, and be sensitive to local values and, and, uh, and concerns. Um, but overall, it, you know, with the right people, you can find a way to work together and build a strong sort of working uh, environment. Awesome. Thanks, Justin. How about you, Debbie? Yeah, I agree with everything Justin said. Um, and I just kind of want to add on to the fact that, yeah, we all come from different backgrounds. And obviously, <laughs> I've kind of talked a lot about how we're all about di diversity here at TikTok. Um, but yeah, just one, just one little example, I guess, of in particular on the community team here. Um, in Australia, we have a large Aboriginal and Indigenous uh, population, and so my team, especially my boss, 
Um, she did some things for NAIDOC week and it's just, it's really inspiring to see all of that and the research that goes behind that and getting to work with creators in that kind of space that normally I probably wouldn't have had that opportunity. So for me, I think I like putting the hard work and research towards that kind of thing as well, because I have so much to learn. Um, you know, I know, I know things about all the Asian community, but there's so many other communities that, and collectives that we do help and we touch upon in terms of like what I do. Um, but yeah, in terms of collaborating and, you know, working with people, it's, it's all about being open and we obviously all lean into the bite styles and we all kind of just support each other and continue to grow. So, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. And Boone, how about yourself? Yeah, so uh, for my team in Singapore, we, we, we have a quite a diverse team here. So we have a situation of like East meet West in this case. So uh, there, there may be some communication issues like coming from different backgrounds. So some people may take certain message from me. So uh, how do we do with that here is simply take a step back, you know, try and listen carefully to the real message here. So for example, uh, the way some people speak may be very passionate, but some to some people that may be a bit rude, for example. So uh, it, for Singapore itself, I, uh, Singapore is a multiracial uh, country. So uh, one tip that I have is to just really uh, lean back and, and listen to the real message. That, that itself, you will have a bit of sensitivity and then uh, maybe you can get the right message and you know, or maybe just just talk more, you know, and get to know each other. And, and that really helped in, in the line of work. Thank you, Boo. Appreciate that. Thank you. So, you know, just we talked about um, being open, humble, our diverse backgrounds. We talked about how we have people coming from all walks of life to the organization and varied backgrounds. And then that, that creates an amazing culture, right? Um, uh, creates an amazing kind of environment to be working in. So if we were to look at our culture in the organization, what would you say are some of the things or one or two things that you enjoy about the culture at um, TikTok? So um, Boone, can I start off with you if that's okay? Yeah, sure. Um, so one, one of the, uh, there are a few things that I like here. So one of them is this uh, positive and constructive environment. So like I have elaborated before. So if you have a question here, like most people are really willing to jump into, into solving these problems. So uh, at some point in time, you may have a, a question that you feel like it's a little bit stupid that you don't feel like asking, but uh, hey man, in, in this environment, it's okay because uh, at this scale, uh, some question that may seem silly may become a potential huge problem. So, you know, everyone is really, uh, uh, I'll, I'll say that everyone is really willing to contribute in this case. Yeah, so that, that, that is uh, quite one of the, the uh, positive culture for me. So another thing is uh, self-learning. So uh, you, you are free to have like uh, talk about problems, like there are learning groups as well. Uh, so you can talk about things. So recently we, we established a group to talk about certain topics so uh, we can get everyone to review and everyone is, is happy to contribute to this. So yeah, uh, these are the few things that uh, I, I really enjoy. Yeah. Thanks, Bing. Appreciate that. Debbie, can I pick up with you culture at TikTok? Yeah, of course. Um, so I, I use this in like a caption before too, but basically, um, you'll never work a day in your life if you love your job. And so I feel like I finally found that one job where I get to show up every day and I absolutely love every single aspect of it. I'm not, I'm not just brown nosing either when I say that. Um, everyone that we work with, um, at least in our office and everyone that we, you know, had global, you know, just the Zooms and all that, we have a global company. So everyone is just so, so creative and so talented. And we obviously, TikTok looks at potential much more than your, you know, who did you work for in the past kind of thing, uh, which I really value. Um, and I really, really love how how much fun it is to work here. Like I, everything that, you know, people, <laughs> I always get a lot of, like, you're so lucky to work here. And we, we know that we really are. Um, then it, it's just, it's such a fun environment because, we know that the app is so fast paced and it's creative. At the same time, that's that's exactly what our workplace kind of just gives off. Like for example, like we had an Easter egg hunt <laughs> the other day. Um, I mean, it's just, we're so lucky to kind of be in that kind of environment where everyone kind of thinks just very similarly and we're all here to have a, have a laugh, have a good time. Like we never take each other too seriously, but we all work very, very hard at the same time. Amazing, thanks. Um, Justin, how about yourself in terms of the culture here? 
Yeah, I mean, I need to find out why we didn't have an Easter egg. I was going to say the same thing. Disappointed. <laughs> um, Sorry. <laughs> I mean, when when I sort of look out across TikTok, you know, what I see is very happy, engaged workforce, lots of opportunities to develop and grow. And, and this is a sign of a great company culture. And uh, workplace involvement is something that TikTok heavily endorses. There are lots of events that are organized to, to create a sense of support and involvement um, and fun ways that employees can, can get together on a personal and a sort of professional level. And you know, this has been so important during the last year as we've been, as, as we've been sort of in lockdown. Um, there's also a lot of transparency. Um, we get a lot of sort of detailed communication from the top. And I feel that people people feel like they're 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 in the loop and they have access and, and visibility of, of the leaders. Um, so yeah, that I think generally the the, the culture is something that I've not seen before. Uh, I've worked at some great companies, but it, it's phenomenal at, uh, at TikTok. Amazing, thank you. And I, I totally agree with all three of you. It's just an amazing place to be at the moment. And I think I um, couldn't, couldn't add any more to that. Um, when we talk about um, kind of candidates or people joining the organization, if you was to give them one or two kind of golden tips or advice um, going through the process or even thinking about joining the organization, what would that be? Um, I'm going to start off with Debbie here. That's okay. Um, so I'm going to use a TikTok trend. Um, so tell me you love TikTok without telling me you love TikTok. I think that's the best way to describe how basically you want to show and not tell. So I know obviously when everyone is trying to hire in here, like everyone is just oh, like, most people probably think that TikTok is a dream company. That's why it was mine too. Um, but I think it's really important to demonstrate a creative mindset and to show that you really understand the company's language. So first and foremost, obviously, like for example, TikTok is a short form video company, or like we're devoted to media and creativity and showing that through, you know, all the different trends and the sounds. And um, if you show that in your application, I mean, for example, I was the first, <laughs> I was the first candidate in the Australian office to make a TikTok resume. And I think, um, <laughs> I think I just figured that everyone did that. Um, and I'm not saying that everyone out there listening should do this. Um, it might not work for everyone. However, I think because I really leaned into that and I knew that I, in my passion, I was able to showcase why I love TikTok so much through that. Um, I think it goes a long way. Like you really show how invested you are in a product if you really put time and effort into something. So. Thanks, Debbie. Appreciate it. I mean, I surely didn't do a TikTok video, but I mean, in hindsight, I should have. But. <laughs> um, various <laughs> roles for various things. So I'm not saying everyone should do <laughs> Justin, how about yourself? Did you do a TikTok? Yeah, I, I, if I'd done a TikTok video, I definitely wouldn't have got the job. <laughs> so um, it's a good job I did it. Um, I mean, what I, what I, when I'm interviewing for candidates, I look, I look for a clear desire to work for TikTok. I mean, it's the most you know, sort of current and creative company around at the moment. And I want people to tell me why the company um, is so good for them and why that will be a good move for their careers. I also look for a very positive attitude. I look for strong personality um, and someone who's going to get on well with, with people. Um, it was a very close knit team, this, this regional team. And I'm looking for people that are not just gonna add value in terms of the legal advice, but also maintain a, a great harmony within, within the regional team. Um, so yeah, those, those would be my general tips um, when interviewing for a legal job in the Middle East. <laughs> Thanks, Justin. And Boone, how about yourself? What, what tips would you give? Okay, uh, so for me, uh, since I am a mobile engineer, I have to give something from the software engineer perspective. So uh, from a software engineer perspective, I would say that don't be afraid and try to aim for the highest. So uh, I think many of us, sometimes we may be like, uh, we, we wouldn't dare to try for something that is too big, I think because it's, that's out of your comfort zone. So I would say that, you know, you know what, just, just go and give it a try. You know, you would never know where you let end up, uh, where you will end up. Yeah. So be open-minded and be willing to work on yourself. 
So for, for example, just go for the interview and have some objectives, uh, have some learnings and, and ask questions. So these are people that are the best among the best in the industry, right? So they will be able to tell you that uh, what you need to work on. And if you, if you get in, that's great. If you don't, there's something to take away so you can work on it. So that's why I'll, I'll, I'll tell all, all candidates that, you know, uh, we have, have this uh, mindset that you want to try for the best and take everything that, that uh, advice that's given to you and just keep working at it. Awesome, thank you. So kind of before we come to a close, I've got one kind of final question for all of you. And um, that would be, if we were to think of hashtag Team TikTok in one word, what would that one word be for you all? So um, Boom, what would that be for you? Teamwork. Awesome. And Debbie? I'm going to be very cheesy here and say hashtag life changing. <laughs> <laughs> and Justin? Um, I would say um, inspiring. Amazing. Thank you. Um, it's been really, really, really good to hear the, your stories, your backgrounds. And I think um, so much, so many common, common themes coming out from our conversations today. Really appreciate your time today. And thank you for taking the time for being a part of the TikTok happy hour. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Alpesh. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Alpesh. Thank you so much. Yeah.